Oh, well, look at the inside. Oh, we're gonna go inside. The are green we? houndstooth mm. there. Oh man. And the green dashboard. And the faux wood. Oh man. Wizard. Oh. oh, you're making my noises now. Oh. It's pretty, isn't it? Have you have you had any wild nights alone with this thing yet? You're being a little more quiet than usual, because uh, uh, anyway, my parents are probably gonna watch this wizard, so be well, appropriate. I'll, I'll be nice. Welcome to Movies Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And it is a really dumb channel that is a really bad influence on you and my friends and my family members. And this is a prime example of that. A 1972 Chevy K5 Blazer here purchased by my parents because they went to Barrett Jackson to see me oh, back in October in Scottsdale, saw the old Blazers, saw me being enthusiastic about them, and well, went and bought it. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because my parents are really into General Motors products, currently drive Suburbans, and, and sort of have my entire life, which sort of explains my taste, hence having the GMT 400 Suburban, something my parents had back in the day. Uh, Riptide Blue Escalade, my parents had an Escalade back in the day, not in this color, uh, but they never had anything like this. Apparently, I was made in an S10 Blazer, I hate it when they tell that story, but that's how I came to be inside of a car, outside of a club. Um, but getting that mental image out of my head. A anyway, the S10 Blazer definitely wasn't this, but it was still better than the Blazer that we have from Chevrolet now. A midsize crossover that's made to compete with say a Honda CRV or an HRV, that kind of stuff. Definitely not worthy of the Blazer name. It has the nose of a Camaro, so call it a Camaro Mach-E like Ford Mustang has. Don't call it a Blazer. Now, I can't knock Chevy too much because they do make the equivalent of this vehicle, kind of, with the Tahoe and the Suburban, and they brought back the Z71 package and Trail Boss, that kind of stuff, all-terrain. So they do make an off-roady version now of this SUV, but it's still, oh, it's still not this. And this is probably the nicest one I have seen in a very, very long time. But despite being very nice, it does have its fair share of issues. It's old and old cars are going to be a hoopty no matter what. But today I'm gonna to give you a tour of this Blazer and then we're gonna take it up to the car wizard to figure out, well, all that's wrong with it, which actually it has a lot of leaks. That's one of the reasons why I have it because the wizard needs to look at all the leaks coming from the front middle and back middle of this thing. In addition, there's issues with this door, which we'll get to in a little bit, and the rear hatch. And with that, well, let's start the tour of this beautiful green blazer. It's green. Now, tomorrow I fly to Houston for my fourth Barrett Jackson live TV hosting gig. I'm just now starting to get the hang of it. But one of the things that really blew my mind during the first one and the second one was the prices on these K5 Blazers. They have absolutely exploded in value, kind of following the old Broncos. And nice examples like this, well, they can be a hundred grand or more. Resto modded ones done properly, $150,000, $200,000, which just seems unbelievable, but this is what people want nowadays. You see trends changing from muscle cars and resto mods of muscle cars to SUVs, which shouldn't seem like much of a stretch because that's what people want today in new cars. So it makes sense that vintage SUVs would just explode in value. And this one, oh man, being green, it is just so nice. 350 V8 engine. You can see the little bit of wood here that they put into the lower trim here. So, so nice. Why the Grand Wagoneer didn't do something like this? It just remains a mystery to me because the Wagoneer is so blah in the styling department. The interior is so nice. The features rival Range Rover, rival anything, but it's not exciting. You could have gone with a little bit of wood on the body to pay tribute, maybe even as an option to the old Wagoneer and satisfied people like me, but they didn't do it, maybe someday. But the other cool thing about this Blazer is this removable top, a convertible. Now, it took the entire family or all your friends to get this top off, but it is a removable top, and that's why the roll bar is in here. And when you look inside, I mean, it is just absolutely perfect. The green houndstooth is just, oh, oh the green center console, the green dashboard, it is just so dang cool. Basically, the only thing not stock looking in here is the radio, but it's pretty subtle, and the steering wheel. But just look at this thing. Holy moly. 
Another thing is the stamped inlay into the vinyl here. You can see a nice little pattern going all the way back, which looks like something you'd find in a Cadillac or 80s grandma kitchen, but here it is in the K5 Blazer. Really nice touch there. But I mentioned one of the issues was the door, and well, this door is, as you can see, it didn't close. It takes a lot of force to close this door, and as you can see, it's scraping on the frame. It's already taken the paint off, which is really a shame because this thing is perfect, but now, well, it's broken in all because of door misalignment. And when I drove this thing over, which you'll see when I drive it in a little bit, the noise from this door, the wind is just unbelievably bad because the seal is not lining up here. It is so off, it's basically like this quarter window is open all the time and there's a little bit of a breeze going through it. It looks like it's catching too, which is really a bummer because when you spend all this money restoring things and then the little fit and finish, the little details, uh, you don't get it right. It just leaves a bad taste in your mouth. So uh, I'm not gonna call out who sold my parents this car. Maybe they left some advertising on this vehicle, but uh, kind of wish they took a little bit of extra time to get the little details just right. But on the other hand, when you buy one of these and you're not the person that spent all the money to restore it, or you're buying it from a dealer trying to make a profit from restoring it, you know there's gonna be some things that aren't done to the way you like them. You have to spend a few grand to sort this thing out, and hopefully it's not more than a few grand. We'll have the car wizard look at this thing, but here, more wood back here. And this tailgate area, it's like a truck, but here's another broken thing. That has fallen off, like ripped away from the rear hatch. So we have uh, no strut system. Also rattles around when you drive it, which is slightly annoying, but overall, how could you be disappointed when you look at this thing? It is just absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately though, it doesn't drive as good as it looks, but I mean, they really didn't drive all that great new. One last look underneath before we head up to the wizards and Holy smokes, it is just so dang nice. Yeah, not the quietest thing in the world, or the smoothest, but it does go down the road pretty well. Steering wheel, <laughs> that's, uh, that's some play there, but I think that's exactly how it's supposed to be. I mean, this was never built to be a highway, right? You bought a Cadillac for that. This primary purpose of this thing was to go off-road, and we're cruising down the interstate at speeds it was never designed to do, and it's well, it's doing it. So, see what the wizard has to think about this thing and check in on the other projects. I think the Hummer is back on four wheels, so that's exciting. Oh man, wizard. <laughs> oh, you're making my noises now. <laughs> it's pretty, isn't it? Have you, have you had any wild nights alone with this thing yet? No, it just got in. My parents just bought it. I'm thinking of some wild nights alone with it myself. Uh, well, look at the inside. Oh, we're going to go inside, The green we? houndstooth mm. there. Oh, man. And the green dashboard. And the faux wood. This is like brand new. Sort of. It's, I mean, it's been redone, obviously. Yes. But the condition is like brand new. Unfortunately, see this? Some adjustments at the door. Yeah, it is way, way off. You have to slam it. Yeah. And you can tell it's just, it's cockeyed. Yeah, the gap's wrong. A real big gap up here, yep. Yep, the rear hatch is also broken. It's fallen off the, one of the struts there. Okay. And there's leaks. But before we, we look into this, I know you, you really want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see here, you're being a little more quiet than usual, because uh, uh, anyway, my parents are probably gonna watch this wizard, so be well, appropriate. I'll, I'll be nice. Okay. I won't do anything. Anymore. Why don't we go around and update on all the hoopties, which uh, there really hasn't been much updating in the last couple of weeks because we've been filming Car Issues, second season, mm -hmm. that involves the wizard looking at cars, cars you're not really supposed to see yet, uh, but they, <laughs> they will be on the show. So that's why the Diablo, it's up here to get some little things fixed, like the air conditioning leaked out, and there's a noise, the, 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 the moaning noise. Yeah. Uh, but hasn't been touched yet. No, has been touched. Last week was devoted to car issues too. Right, but Paula 911, you got the gauges going? Yep, all the gauges are working. The only thing left is heat shields and then this thing will be ready to rock. So the LS Swap 911, there's stuff on either side, like wires and hoses and things you're gonna protect it this time. From, yep. Even though we didn't have an issue, it's just, right, just, just cause. To, just to be safe, yep. Okay, well, moving on, I see a yellow thing's on the ground. Yeah. Unfortunately, the tires that I got just weren't good, so we went ahead and got brand new ones. They were $1,200, which is really not bad considering the size of them. I don't 
What are the what's the mud claws? They're like thirty sevens or something. Mud claw extremes. Thirty seven by twelve point five. What 17. a name! So the back bumper still needs to be hammered and sprayed, but the control yep. arms, all new control arms all around, all cleaned up underneath. What a difference. I mean, night and day. The body on this thing was nice because it had been redone, but the lower part, the lower control arms were so rusted, and now you've painted everything to look pretty to match, and you'd never know. You can see the air conditioner is working because it's leaking condensation water out. Yes, you've been testing it out, and there's the uh, inboard brakes are real easy to see with the uh, winch off, huh? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Really cool the way they made these. Yeah. So what's left? We need to finish up painting the rear bumper yeah and i think that's about it well you told me about the abs you think it's the module here right yeah it does have a code 2-0 that's saying that there's a pump motor issue going on there a good used module would take care of that but it's really up to you i really don't think you'd want abs on something like this especially if you're doing off-roading so i'm kind of okay with it not working you kind of want the brakes to lock up and not pulse when you're off-road Looks like there's a few things in here that need to go back together. Yep, that's about it. Wow. All your gauges work now. So I'm almost done. It is, it's almost done. And Euroasian Bob has a couple of Priuses lined up for me to run over. You're gonna run over your... Prius with this? I am, yes. Yes. Wow. But he sold, uh, he sold ketchup. Apparently. Already it's gone? And he has a pending sale on us. Yeah, when I actually bought this, my buddy Urination Bob bought a matching red one, and he's a dealer, so he ended up selling it before we could have fun. Yeah. It'll just be me. Just be you, and mustard. All right, well, you want to look at this blazer? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I couldn't figure out how to open the hood on this thing, wizard. You couldn't figure it out? No. No. I know you're going to figure it out in five seconds, but... <sighs> okay. So the latch is in the grill. Anybody could just walk right up and open the hood. You just have to have the right hole. I, oh, okay. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. It is nice. That is beautiful. So this is a 350. Some of them are 454s, which is crazy, but... It's got a quadrajet on it. Yeah. Those are good when they're set up right. Interesting. The alternator looks... <laughs> a little old and crusty. It doesn't match the rest of the car. <laughs> no. What's up with it that? It looks like it's from 1973 or two. Interesting. But otherwise, very, very nice. That airbox still has the old, the old Harrison st sticker there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it must have been a pretty good survivor before they completely restored it, huh? Yeah, they wouldn't have gone this far on something that wasn't worth it. Right. Well, well shall we get her on the lift? Let's do it. Oh, wizard, it's so green. It is very green. Kind of like the 456 over there. Yeah, I'm looking at Magic Mike been over this, which is interesting. Mine's blue. But this is somebody else's gated 456 that's getting a major belt service done here. Yep, just you finished up. You are deep into it. Yep, just finished up doing the timing belt service. Got some new ones on there and some new bearings and checking valve clearance while we're in here while we got everything apart. Yeah. But next to do is the water pump. Gonna rebuild that for him and start putting it back together well the nice thing about the 456 is compared to a lot of others like a testeros the engine doesn't have to come out for the belt service so it's not as expensive uh bad news is uh valve seals i think on these like to go so it'll start smoking yeah sometimes that'll happen it usually depends i think there was a vin range on that not entirely mm. sure but this one seems to be doing pretty well mine's uh, probably in the range yeah i checked valve clearance on this one and he's all within spec which is oh, nice to see beautiful well do you enjoy this work it's not bad. Better than Bentley's? Better than old Bentley's. Ah, <laughs> okay. Well, good luck to you. The blazer's going up. I think I remember your dad telling me a story that you were born in one of these. Not born, uh, something else. But let's move on. Let's go underneath and take a look. Okay. There, there are some leaks here. Uh, one coming from the very front, and I think it's, yeah, it looks like that bad boy probably the biggest one so it's coming from the input shaft seal right here on the front of the steering gearbox seal the wet yep so yeah we might be able to reseal that here but it might be just as cheap just to replace it these are pretty common oh, okay sometimes it's just as effective to just replace the whole thing than it is to try and rebuild one the sad thing is this one looks new so it's just defective huh yeah 
We may be able to reseal it. It looks like we'll give it a shot. I think we could reseal it here. And I'm seeing another pretty common leak as well, huh? Oh, the front main seal, yep. Yep. That's a big one too. Mm-hmm. Active dripper. Pin. Yep. Wow. Fuel pump is all dry. The belts look good. The power steering pump is not leaking. The radiator's dry. Those are those cross joints are good. Yeah, with the locking hubs. The old school locking hub. So when you turn this, does it do anything back here? When you turn it, it would lock and start turning the shaft. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn it out. There it did. There yep. It yep. So here, let me, let me unlock it here. Free. Now spin it. Free. Free. And now locked. And there it is. It works. Old school. Yes, that's the old school way. Get out and lock the hubs. It's certainly simple and neat, but it sucks to do on a snowy day. Definitely. If you got stuck. There is a dust pan here missing that goes over the torque converters. It's like stamp steel. Right. That's very easy to come by and cheap, so we could get that put on. You see remnants of it here? Mm-hmm. It used to go bolt here, here, and up top. It would look a lot better without the old torque converter just sitting out like that, huh? Yeah, and it keeps dirt and debris from getting up in there. Right. It's got a nice exhaust system it on it. Uh, it just looks so nice. It does. Probably a TH350 transmission. Here's a big, beefy transfer case. Uh, a wet transfer case? Oh man, it is. That's the back leak, I imagine. Yeah. So it's not really the seal here that's leaking on the output seal. Mm -hmm. It's the actual gasket where this flange mounts to the transfer case. Mm. Also the speedometer O-ring is leaking. It looks like something was just put together and it does. it's already leaking. Right here as well, the same story. So what'd they do wrong? I wonder if they even used a gasket here. I don't see a gasket, it's just metal to metal. Mm. There should be a gasket there. That's about it. <clears throat> the joints are good. Rancho shocks. Yep. Magna flow exhaust. Very nice. It's uh, every bit as nice as advertised. It's a shame about the leaks though and the little things, you know? It yeah, just... it's too bad, but those are easy to fix and get this thing right. Right. Big drum brakes. Yep. I can look through the inspection hole and the nice thick brakes in there. Made in Taiwan. What isn't anymore? <laughs> I guess. That's the uh, straps to hold on the fuel tank. Yeah. Nowadays come from the Taiwan. Tank, the tank probably came from Taiwan as well. Yeah, well this is just protect. No, that is the tank itself. There's no protection at all. That's it can correct. just get ruptured. Ooh, beautiful tip too. Mm -hmm. All the wiring looks good. They did a good job. Just need some leaks taken care of. So, you approve? Yes, I approve. Well, unfortunately, Wizard, I think I'm going to have to leave this thing with you to get fixed. Okay. Can I trust you not to uh, be inappropriate with this blazer? I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you. So I guess there is one bill because the Escalade's done, right? Yes, there is a bill this time. It's not a big one. No, not really. I am paying a very big one on the Tesla, unfortunately. Rich Rebuilds posted his video and it was two bad modules. Basically, a worst case scenario, the battery was bad. But Tesla wanted $22,000 to replace the battery and mm -hmm. he was able to do it for like a little under five. Wow. So big savings there. Definitely worth sending it to Florida for. But, uh, Definitely. Oh, kind of a bummer there, but I guess we'll pay the bill and I'll take Riptide Blue home. All right. Whoa. That was expensive to have a weird climate control thing fixed, huh? Pretty common on GMs that actuators go out. They're all up in the dash. Well, now we know why the previous owner traded it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All over $1,200. Well, if that's it, then... I'll take it. I drove the thing for months and it didn't have any problems other than this that I got it with. So I will take it. That's that's as good as it gets for me usually. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, you got the keys? Well, we need to pay first. Oh, of course. Yes. One of these days I will get away. Thank you for watching.